There we go. I just had to cut my music off. I had music belting out. I'll well, see if I can get the chat room. Right. G'day everyone, how are you all? Oh, you scored it. Number one, Cape Six, first in. Whoop. Wait a minute, I've got, I've got feedback here. I've got a... Oh, you idiot. Oh, you There you go, get rid of that. Don't need that on there. Didn't want to listen to myself. Now, let me just... I'm just interested to see. I think I'll just actually change that. There you go. That's going to do it. Ha! Oh, g'day, Lucas. G'day, Jared. Good morning. G'day, Brian. Uh, g'day, Tony West. Hi, how are you? Trevor, good to have you on board, mate. Thanks again for the membership yesterday. Really appreciate that. I'll talk later about that, but those of you that know me, I'm, I'm not pushing it. I would like to get my subs up, so if you know anyone that's enjoying it, if you could hit the subscribe button, geez, I'd appreciate that. It would all be good. But we're all in this together, so this is just woodwork, and that's what we're going to focus on in any other stupidity or skullduggery that happens along the way. G'day, Louise. Uh, g'day, Andrew. Uh, what's everyone up to? Well, I'm doing woodworking, as a matter of fact, Brian. Um, g'day, Ray. Reginald. Wally. Randy, Chad, Max, oh, we're all here. The gang's all here, so we might as well get into it. Well, I had a great day yesterday, I've got to tell you. Got into the stream, everything went well there. I should have kept streaming because everything turned <laughs> south after that. Very disappointed with the outcome of the chopping board. I shall show you and explain why in a little bit. But good learning curve, learned a lot of things. G'day, Dead Lion. How are you? All the way from WA. Oh, you must be a mate with Ray. He's over in WA. There you go. Torrell, g'day. Alan, hi. Please, you can catch us. Uh, a bowling channel. <laughs> a bowling channel. W8. You do woodworking. I, oh, there you go. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, so very um, <laughs> poor results on the Angrain <coughs> shopping board, which I'll show you a little bit later on. I got ahead and started um, veneering these hearts up, which we're gonna continue with. I've got, I was trying to get some machining done before I go on, but I've just um, ripped up some Queensland walnut. And you're lucky this isn't smell vision because gee whiz, I'll tell you what, that Queensland walnut, woo, it stinks. Oh, speaking of stinks, morning, Bob, how are you? Just come in to say good day, have you? Where are you? We should get... We, there you go. Look, I know what he's after. You're after me cereal, aren't you, mate? That's what you want. Well, you're just going to have to... No, you're just going to have to wait. I haven't finished it yet. I shall have it very shortly. Look at that. He's just... That's, that's expectation in a dog's face. Yeah, mate. Look, you look as if you need a good feed. I know I've been starving you lately. <laughs> as if. Oh, dear. You're off now, right? Well, we'll see you when you get back. We'll most likely still be streaming. Bob's giving up. He's waiting until I finish my bracky. So, yeah, I've got to rip some um, Queensland walnut up to make the plinth. For these, I cut the rebates in this, so we'll put the solid edge in that. We'll cut the picture frame up and put that together. We'll do a bit more on the chair repair. I'll finish veneering these, which I think I'll do first. And then we'll see whatever else turns up and then I'll tell you about my sad thing with the chopping board but a good learning experience um what else that's better didn't even have time to tidy the shed up yesterday that's how flat strap I was I finished in here at about oh half past seven and I looked at the floor and I, my legs went nah you're going back to bed so I went back up Susie fed me she's she's around somewhere she'll come down later on with a Hang on, I'm just seeing if that's in the centre. Is that in the centre? No, it's not. I'm not in the centre. Now, one right I feel right, I'm off centre. Wait a minute, let me just put myself on the centre. There you go, that's better. Yes, mate, you'll get fed in a minute. Um, all the offcuts from this Ambonia bell too, I've been thinking I'm going to finish off that curved box, what lies beneath, with layered... There's this one here, where are we? 
I love that one. It's, is that looking the right way? No, it's got to look that way. There you go. Yeah, what lies beneath. It's very reptilian. Um, so I'll finish that off. And all the offcuts I've got from the Amboinia, I'm going to ebonise some and put some on there. And that's another job down the track. Susie said to me the other day, she said, you'll never run out of things to do. I said, no, not as long as I'm married to you. <laughs> She's not watching. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, it's true. There's nothing worse than being off centre. Um, all right, what did I say? Oh, okay. We'll do these. I'll wolf this down while I'm thinking about it. These. I tell you what, I nearly blew me poof of a out yesterday carrying this over from over there. Oh, it was heavy. Let me just move this camera in between this camera and crank it up so we got a bit of height there. And what's that looking like? Uh, it's looking pretty schmick. All right, move that one over there. So I cut the hearts out of the New Guinea uh, rosewood side and then in Boynia on that side. So mm. Leave that there. I try and use this paper again, but quite frankly, it's a, it's a waste of time in most cases. So I'm not concerned where it hasn't gone all the way through because in many cases, this is oversized anyway. So we're gonna chop out all those bits. And if there is a bit showing, I'll show you how to fix that. It is all good. Mada bum. Now you can tell I was busy. All right. So we might go there, then you, then you can see what I'm doing. And please, someone, in an hour and a half or thereabouts, remind me to check my batteries so I don't go deep. I don't um, stop. Transmitting a noise. These are the uh, bases I've got to make up. Obviously, we've got to have another piece in there. So we'll do that shortly. Oh, where are we up to? Here we go. Here we go. Those of you that have, uh, haven't been here before, normally when I do a stream, I do a specific thing. And we just do one project, but given the current state of affairs, I have decided that I'm going to stream every day for my sanity more than anyone else's. Um, but it's not a question of doing a project. It's actually I've invited you into my workshop as I work. So if you see me working on, ah, I shouldn't talk and try and think at the same time, should I? I um, do a lot of different things. That's because I've got a lot of different jobs to do. And you're actually with me as I work through the day. So this is what I do every day, basically. Well, not exactly this. I do do different things. But you just watching me work, I suppose. Um, if there's any questions anyone's got, I'll do my very best to answer them. And if you want a live demonstration about something you might be feeling a bit challenged with with your woodwork, once more, if I've got the time and I've got the skill, I'm more than happy to stop what I'm doing and give you a demonstration here. Uh, Jacob yesterday wanted to know how to 
square a piece of timber up using a number four plane. And as I've said many times, number fours are not my favourite plane by any means. But we stopped and we squared a bit of timber and Jake said it helped him out, so that's what I'm here for. Matter of fact, I had a phone call from a really good mate of mine, far better furniture maker than I'll ever be. Did you hear that, Michael? <laughs> um, yeah, Mick rang me up, he said, why don't you like number fours? And I had to tell him, so. big shout out to you, Mick. You take it easy on the roads and enjoy your mountain view and we'll get together when all this is finished. Um, so yeah, it's amazing who watches. I honestly didn't think any, oh, I threw that bit away, I shouldn't talk. Um, I didn't think other woodworkers would be watching. Well, sort of furniture maker type people that I know. So there you go. It's amazing. See, you just got to be careful what you say, don't you? Okay, let's just whack this on here. Now, with this, you'll notice it's very crinkly. It's very brittle. And so what I do is I glue one side. This has been glued. I double glue. So the substrate's been glued. I'll put this on there now if i push down to try and flatten that out it's going to crack why because i know why do i know because it cracked yesterday so what i'm doing is this is hot glue that i'm using it's at about 70 degrees and i put glue on the outside this is amboinia burl and now when i press down it won't crack Yeah, see, it's just not staying down. I, I will put money, I will put money on it. Bob will get up shortly and go over and lick that because it's got hide glue on it. Uh, where are we? So what I do, and this is the reason I bought the book press up next to me, is I'll put this in the book press. I can find the other bit that goes with it. Oh, for goodness gracious me, dear, oh dear. <laughs> it's, it's stuck in the press. Look at that. <laughs> now, <laughs> oh, you're off to a good start, Steve. Keep it going. You're a champion. You've got a head like a spark plug. Doesn't make you a champion. Okay. <clears throat> so, I'll press that one. And then I'll start setting out the next. See how brittle it is? I've got some other stuff that's not as brittle. I just reckon this, this is old. And it's been cooked for too long. Let me have a chat too whilst I'm here. Hey, Prunella, how are you? Snuck in on me. Yeah, I know, Max, I, but I, I know she's, <laughs> she's not going to watch. Unless one of you tell her. Uh, already, hang on, what did I miss? I'm looking for one of Brian's. Oh, how's the batteries today, Brian? Thank you. Yeah, look, I, I'll gloss over a lot of these. If I don't answer you, I apologise. It's not that I'm being rude. It's just I can't, I can't keep up. So, yeah. I checked the batteries, so thank you. Hour and a half, give me another check. Okay, Dennis, thanks for dropping in, and when you get some data, hope to see you again. Oh, thanks, Jacob. That was nice of you. Please, it did help. Um, yeah, I think, I think, Dennis, that's it. It's surreal. It is your brain cannot comprehend. You know what's happening, but it's like you're just watching a, I don't know, what was that movie on ages ago? Um... The sphere or something or other where they're in a bubble. It's, it's sort of like watching that. It's quite weird. <laughs> yeah, true, true. It is warmer over, over here. Is that right, Prunella? I've got to watch you then. Yes, we do, Tony. 
But um, I read the things on YouTube and any mention of that I have to basically take off because what they've done, and it was good, what they've done is they've started to rely more on um, technology to screen chats and videos because they're cutting staff down. And so they said basically any mentions of the particular thing that's happening at the moment, the computer or the technology that's monitoring chat rooms and videos will just kill the chat room. So if you can all please be mindful of that, and I am, so if you make a comment and it's got mention of it and I delete it, please don't think I'm being rude. It's just I'm trying to preserve the chat room for anyone else that comes in when we're not live. And I, I guess it makes sense because there's a lot of people could use it as a platform to... Um, increase the fear or further their own agenda or whatever. Anyway, back to woodwork. That's what I want to focus on. Woodwork. Oh, dear. Um, I haven't used hot glue since I was a bit of a kid. My dad always put it back. Well, there you go, Trevor. You're only about 32 at the moment. You're a young fella. I'm surprised, I'm surprised they were using it when you were a kid, being the young man that you are. It's all right, Trev, we, we know, we know. <clears throat> uh, do you know the woodman, the woodman, the woodman that lives gluing things? That's me. Now, <laughs> I'm going to see if I can... I, can't even... I had a great system last night. I, think I, was, I was helped by Bon Jovi pushing 10 out of, <laughs> out of my amp that I use as a speaker. <laughs> Uh, but it's all good. We're getting there. See, I'm starting to get into a routine. I've, I'm finding when I first started, I was, oh, I was tired. But now I'm finding I'm not quite as tired. So that's, that's a good thing. Gee, this is fragile, this stuff. Should have got a different bundle, but anyway. I've started now. Tell you what, if you ever use high glue, Trevor, I bet you would attest to this, it's the best hand cleaner out, isn't it? You just put it on your hands and put it under cold water and, oh, your hands come up nice and clean and soft. Did you hear that rip? Just ripped. There we go. I don't think I'll need that bit up the top, hopefully. Now, the challenge is to put glue over that without moving it. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. That was good talking to Terry yesterday. There we can still converse. All right. Now, I'll take the other one out and it should be pressed. It won't be dry, but it will be pressed. So then I can now tell if there was anything not quite right there. See how it's all nice and flat now? I won't take it all off because I like keeping the paper on until it's dry. And I'll put that over here. And then when we finish them all, I'll put them all back in the press to sit until tomorrow, where they will all be nice and dry then. Three, four more to go. There you go. We're on the downhill run now. <laughs> Thanks, Trevor. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh. Hey, 
Hey, Ellen. Oh, homemade peppermint bark to enjoy tomorrow too. So I'm also. Oh, is that like a tea prunella? A peppermint bark. I love peppermint. Hang on, I'll tell you what, I've got a packet here. I might have one. I, I will. There you go. I love peppermints. Look at that. Extras. Oh, and Bob's looking. No, Bob, you don't like them. I can tell you that for a fact. I'll put one down there and you won't eat it. And that means I'm not going to eat it either. There we go. Um, from what I hear, Wally, no. Oh, give me your right name again. I hate calling you your dog's name. <laughs> I apologise, I forgot it. Um, no, apparently you can't. I'm right here, obviously, because I always have a large supply of um, masks and gloves and everything else because of what I do. But, uh, yeah, Susie was saying this morning that a friend of hers that lives in a different suburb, they just can't get them anywhere. Now, Bob's got the hump now. Oh, no, I thought you wanted to go out. I, I was tempted to wear my... Wood turning <laughs> master the shopping centre. Makes me look like Darth Vader. It's got an air pump and filters and all the all the good gear. Yeah, oh dear. Where are we? Yeah, you're right, Tony, no worries, mate. And if you want anyone to break the rules, it's me, believe me, so. For me to stick to the rules is something quite unusual. Oh, here we go. Um. <laughs> Fair income bright, I like that. <laughs> what, is it used or what? <laughs> That's terrible. G'day Earl, how are you? Thanks for dropping in. <laughs> yeah, it comes out nice and flat, but I'll tell you what, she's... It's not what I would recommend as a beginner veneer, that's for sure. These have to be finished by Friday week, tomorrow week. So we'll, we'll be doing a fair bit of work on just these. I was talking to the person yesterday and um, that's when I said they'd be finished. So just in case those of you that are worrying, it's not a drama because I put it over the other side of the fence. He'll come and pick it up. and it will be all good and safe. That's a nice piece, it hasn't got many splits in it. Oh, said I, I just put my finger through the middle of it. That's all right, we'll cut that bit out. Yeah, I don't know, it's, oh yeah, it's just, it just cracks. And it's tearing apart there. She'll be right, all good. There we go. Right, this one should be flat. Morning, Alan. Good day, Professor John. Wrong profile. <laughs> I guess that's John from um, Stateside that works out of his garage. Is that the, the John I'm talking to? Oh.
Okay, you see? And then, this is a wonderful thing with high glue. If that was PVA, uh, there's every chance that it could still move or lift. But with high glue, as soon as it loses its temperature, it starts to glue. And then, of course, it's the moisture content that gets out of it, which makes it really great. So that's one of the reasons I just, I just love high glue. I it's really, really good stuff. All I'm using here is just baking powder. That ba <laughs> you idiot. Baking paper. I suppose it's better than putting baking paper in a cake, isn't it? Getting that bit wrong. Two to go, have we? No, three to go. Uh, these, these bits here, I think, are absolutely gorgeous. So all those offcuts I'll use on um, another project. It's, the challenge is getting this square out of the middle of it. And you can tell when I'm cutting this, it's very, very gentle. I've got very, very light pressure on the knife. Having said that, I did break a blade last night. That, that would have been fun. That was, that was more fun than watching me use, use a router because I really didn't expect it. And all of a sudden the blade broke and just went twang. But it's all right, I've got spare blades. There's one good thing about Anthony, my grandson, keeps saying, Papa, what are we going to the hardware store for? Why do you buy all that stuff? Well, my son, it's for moments like these when you can't go anywhere. Guess what? You've got second, thirds and fourths of everything and you'll never run out. mental picture there. Those of you can remember, surely everyone can remember. Foghorn, Leghorn and the little, um, oh, what's the little fella? Little, uh, he's always dressed up as an Indian. Wood hen or something, I don't know, what is it? Anyway, this little bird that's always annoying, Foghorn, Leghorn. And, uh, <laughs> This reminded me of me and Anthony. I'm Foghorn Leghorn and Anthony's always, what are we doing this for? What do we have to do this for? <laughs> I say, I say, boy, I say, cause we do. That's it. Oh dear. Chicken hawk. That's what he is, a chicken hawk. Okay, so we put, ooh, I think we'll have that one there. Oh, I don't know. No, we'll go this way. Yeah. Could be so light with this brush. Let me. There we go, John. I figured it was you, mate. Oh, yeah, I'm with you. Well, peppermint schnapps. That'd be better than peppermint tea, wouldn't it? Sorts your digestion and your brain out in one, <laughs> in one shot. Oh dear, oh dear. Uh, don't know. Uh, we might have that that way. Yeah. 
I don't know how long I've been this book press for. A lot of years. Don't even know where I bought it from. I know, I know I didn't buy it and get it shipped by post. Thing weighs a ton. Here we go. And lucky last. No, it's not. Lucky. What's that word I'm always looking for? The, um, not pentagonal. I'll get it. I'll get it. Don't tell me. Pent something. There we go. Penultimate. There you go. I've got it. I hope no one told me because I worked it out. Marcus. Thank you. Okay. All right. That's better. I'm on to me penultimate one. It's a fancy way of saying second last, isn't it? Oh, I entered a race. How'd you go? Oh, I was the penultimate winner. <laughs> oh, you mongrel. I'll just see how that went, I think. No, no, we're good, we're good. In the bin. I'm keeping the nice burly bits, but the um, skanky bits can go in the bin. Oh, you mongrel. Where'd that bit go? That bit will go there, all right. Oh, yeah, right, Trevor. Always do as you're told. You keep believing that, my son. No one else will, but you keep believing it. La da dum. On quiet, isn't it? Shh, we'll wake him up. Oh, crack. And the good thing I like about working with Burl is it doesn't matter because if it gets a crack or a split or a hole or there's grub holes in it, because it's Burl, the nature of it, you can get away with wax filling or um, bog filling and no one notices. The same rule applies that if you're going to use putty or something like that, use a darker putty than the surrounding timber. That way it doesn't get noticed as much. Whereas if you put a lighter one on, it really does stick out. That last one. Ah. Yeah. Oh, that was that was a long time ago, John, wasn't it? I still think I've got 11, 10 or 11,000 followers on Twitch. I must put a thing over there and say this is where I am now. We might pull some overs. 
Whoops, yeah, mutt. Don't use your right hand because you're not right handed. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Yes. I was waiting for that corner to break off, but it didn't. It does come in handy being ambidextrous. I think Bob's given up on me. I will have it when I'm ready, Bob. All right. Just settle. You want to go out? All right, then. There you go. It's going to be interesting. I've got... Um, I've got five sons, but that's including my grandkids. Uh, but two are in Sydney and they're coming home. So we're going to have four dogs here. I don't know if Bob's going to like that, but he gets on with two of them and he hasn't met the third one. It's really funny because my um, one of my sons has got a, a staffie called Marley. That's why Bob got called Bob because when the dogs were running around the yard, it was so much fun to yell out, Bob Marley! And they both come running home. Bobby was just a, well, Bobby's actually christened Bobby, but he was a, a little pup, and Marley used to beat him up, and oh, he'd do horrible things to him. And then they hadn't seen each other for about 12 months, and of course, Bob had grown, and Marley hadn't, and it was so funny. Marley thought he'd try the old tricks and Bob just went whack. And Marley went running to his dad and got between his legs and didn't want to play ever again. And then my other son, he's got a, um, a little dog. And I, it was on for young and old a couple of weeks ago when they came up. And so... They locked their dog up and went out, and their dog escaped. When they came back, there was this huge, oh, my God, what's happened to the dog? Oh, da, 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 da. And we looked, and there's Bob and my son's dog curled up next to each other. They'd sorted their differences out, very much like parents and kids, I suppose, at school. Kids have a bit of a blue. Parents get involved. The blue escalates. The kids are off playing, well, the parents want to scratch each other's eyes out. So I said, just let them go, they'll work it out. And then the next door neighbour's just got a new dog. I was talking about this yesterday. And Bob used to go over and sit with their other dog when he was dying. And how he got over there, I don't know, but he did. And when he saw this new dog yesterday, he took a bit of umbrage to it. Because that's Rocky's yard. It's not another dog's yard, but he'll get used to it. It's all good. Ah, oh, dear. Good to know to connect. That's the other name. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Here's an idea. If we can't get any masks, why don't we... Piece of cloth, clean handkerchief. What clean handkerchief? That's good. How far down are we? Uh, good day, Mark. Mark. Have you got your supplies in yet? I'll send you up a bottle. <laughs> it's crook, isn't it? Oh, yeah, Jeff, I'd love to, mate. Hang on, I'll just put my glasses on. Um, yeah, we might do some later on. Actually, speaking of routers, I'll show you why. I'll finish that job. I'll show you why. I uh, am not happy with the chopping end grain chopping board we made. And what I learnt that may, may save you a bit of grief in the future. Let me just stack all these up. There we go. Mm. 
Okay. Now, if you hear a big groan and a crash and I don't come back on screen, you know me poof of foul blown out. And uh, then you can send in the, the helicopters. Let me just clear a space here. All right. I don't know what this weighs, but it's more than a loaf of bread, I'll tell you. Okay, let's get on this chopping board. That's good for the moment. Just pack these up. They're, um, they're stuck on, but I'm not comfortable about cutting the hearts out yet because they're still a little bit damp. So that's all good. For those of you who wonder what I'm doing, I'll show you if I can find it. Here you go. These, uh, these boxes behind me here, I've got to get finished. And this heart is to go in the lid. And that's how it's going to look in the box. So... There you go, Jeff. I'm going to mention that word. I've got a router out around here, and then I actually use a, a medium called Flock, which is diced rayon, and that then gets put onto there. Susie's doing all these for me, and then that'll be hot glued onto the back of that. That goes in there, and then there's solid cedar that will go around there to hold it in. So that's what they're all for, casing and then you're wondering. All right. Now what I did with this, I didn't have, actually, I should order some sandpaper. I will, I'll do that later. I only had, a, I didn't go down to 80 grit on the drum sander, which is, this bit of kit over there, the jet one, over there in the, see if I can do it, there. Um, I started with 40 grit, which is absolutely fine, and then I only had 80 grit, and I've still got some scratches on there. I tried to get out with 100 grit. Um, I moved, look at that. I did. I moved the camera, so let me just get that back to centre. That was when I was putting that thing over. There we go. <coughs> um, yeah, I tried to take it off with 100 grit on the random orbital, the Merca sander that I've got. It didn't really work, so I would really like to go 80 grit, <coughs> then 100 grit, and get all the scratches out and then go over it with a random sander. But what I did, which was a mistake, I did a large round over here, and because this is long grain, it ripped out something chronic. So I've had to put some bog in there and try and patch it all up. So the next one I do, I think, um, I don't think I know, I will put a very, very small pencil round over it, or just put around over there with a sander. So we might as well get this bog off. We'll put some um, oil on it. And don't forget, it rattles. <laughs> I'll put some oil on it. And that's most likely one we'll have in the house. But the whole thing was, from day one when I started doing this, I told uh, you all, it was just, it's an experimental one because I wanted to get into making uh, a lot of chopping boards, more so because there's a bigger market for chopping boards than there is for furniture. And I'm hoping, if my boys come up for any length of time, 
get them involved and might give them a, an insight into something they could do, make a quid. There you go. Oh, we got... Uh, let, me, let me go right back up here. I've got an old one that's about a year old. I have friends that are sewing there. Oh, there you go. Hey, that's something Susie could do, isn't it? She, oh, I'll tell her about that. That's a good idea. We could make them and just, I don't know, put them in people's letterboxes or what have you. Have you noticed? Have you noticed? I'm not getting onto it because this is woodworking. But if you have, you noticed how much kinder people seem to be. There seems to be a lot more... Uh, give and take and old-fashioned courtesies, which oh, I think is marvellous. Mm. Yeah, what do you think I'm in the shed for, Mark? Getting stuff done. <laughs> and, and just a word of the wise, you ain't never going to finish that list. Uh, G'day, MC. Nice you to drop in. Good to have you back, I should say. Yeah, it's sort of. You're making space. Well, it's better to have in your workshop as your office rather than your office as a workshop. Hey, Jeff. Oh, no, I've said good day to you, haven't I? Sorry, I'll say good day again. Yeah, he is. He's very impatient, Prunella. Please show me how to use a router. I'll do that. That's where I got to before, wasn't it? Hey, Alfredo, here you go. Do you have a good night's sleep? Yeah, oh, yeah, but I'm not happy with it. But that's that's the way it goes, Max. <laughs> what you want to do is, mate, is hide the textures. That's the, that's the best thing. Hide the textures. All right. So I'll bog this up. Now, there's various things you can do. There was um, a company, if I can find it, which were in touch with me the other day, actually. It might be up in the other shed. They sent me some super glue samples of... Oh! There's another job. There you go, Mark. My, my list is growing. Uh, a box of samples of their super glue. Excellent looking super glue. And they've got one that's thick and brown, um, which I thought would be ideal for doing this. But I will do it on the later one and we'll use it. So Alex, if you're watching, mate, appreciate you sending me the stuff. Yes, we will get it done. Star. Star, star, I think it's star super glue. I'm really sorry I can't remember. I'll just see if it's out. I think it could well be up in the other, one of the other sheds. But I'll bring it down and we'll do some. Yeah, it'll be up in the top shed because I mainly use super glue for wood turning. So does Theo when he cuts himself. <laughs> I'll blow that for the rent. Oh dear. I was talking to Theo yesterday. He's good. Uh, all right, so I'm just going to, 100 grit, hate this sandpaper, it's revolting stuff. I won't say what brand it is, but I'm not happy with it. I like Hermes. Okay, so we'll take all this, oh, that's what I was going to say. The putty that I use, there's your, there's your plane, Jacob. Oh, and guess what? When I was cleaning the shop up yesterday, I found another one, so there you go. <clears throat> um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, this stuff. This is absolutely brilliant stuff. I believe you can get it in America. You can definitely get it in Australia. It's called Timbermate. And no, I don't get paid for any of this. But it's a good product. And the thing I love about it is you can mix it to whatever colour you like. So if you're ever going to do some puttying and fill any holes... First thing you've got to do is wet it. That way you get the true colour of the timber. There's no good matching the colour when it's dry because you can get a perfect match there and as soon as you wet it, 
your timber putty is going to stay the same colour and your timber is going to darken. So always wet it. So what I've done with these, I'm hoping, and also I had a couple of bits on here. Here, yeah, this might even be, I don't know if you can see that. Um, okay, this is black bean and I had a couple of chips out. But can you see the colour is variegated to match this? So what you do is you just get it, what did I use? I use a lot of walnut. I had walnut and oak, and you blend them together, and you can actually put streaks in it, or you can put dots or swirls, and you can match the pattern of the timber. The other thing this is great for, if you ever need it, is you can water it right down to just a slurry and use it as a grain filler. So if you've got a very open, poured uh, bit of timber, you can rub it in there as a grain filler. And I've had stuff that, all that stuff's, oh, I suppose it'll be about seven years old, that stuff. But I did have some stuff that was 30 years old and it had gone all hard. I put water with it. It didn't smell very nice. But the um, thing was, it still worked. It was good. So, okay, let's, let's sand this off. Who's off? <coughs> Hang on. I'll, I'll catch it. Weather line. G'day, Carl. What a bog. Oh, uh, what bog? Putty. Putty. That's what bog is, if that's what you were asking. Um, hi, Steve. I'm not, I'm not finished to see yesterday's chair repair. Going to fix to... Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll do the chair repair after I've sanded this back. There you go. Uh, that's it. Whatever they call it. <laughs> okay, Brian, catch you later, mate. Uh, Jeff, when you get to see, Th I won't be seeing Thea, but I'll talk to him when I get to see. Just so you can see your workshop became a mess, or shall I say, add to the mess? No, my workshop's pretty blasted tidy at the moment. Uh... Okay, righto, let's go. On that one? Yeah. Let me move these. That's another thing we're going to do today is I'll show you a really great finishing technique.
Okay, now I'm, I'm really not happy with um, this bog down, the, bog down the side here or here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some uh, moisture on it, have a look, see what it looks like. And if I'm not happy, we'll just rip a bit off on the saw and um, make the board just... A tad, a tad narrower, which is, in many ways, a much better alternative to try and fix a mistake. You just remove it to start with. Although that's that's actually, that's not. Where are we? That's not too bad. I think I could live with that. Ah. Uh, Oh, take that bit off there. That I've missed. Uh, what I put on there was metho or uh, DAA, denotured absolute alcohol. That way it evaporates really quick. And what we'll do is, I'm happy with this just to have it kicking around the place as a demo model. So I'll find a cleanish bit of rag. There you go, there's a clean bit of rag right in the middle there. And we'll just... Whack some of that on it. This is my own concoction. It's a mixture of um, beeswax and coconut oil. So it actually nourishes the timber. And uh, makes it all nice. Now I'm going to this on there because I don't want the grease to get all over everything. You can see how nicely that sort of does blend in, but that's what I was talking about. If you've got darker putty rather than lighter putty, it doesn't... Um, seem quite as obvious. There are other things you can use. You can use hot uh, wax sticks, shellac sticks, all of which I have and I use from time to time. Oh, that feels nice. Like that body butter you get from the body shop. And, and to be honest, you can barely see, in fact, you can't see the sanding marks underneath that. So that's Jarrah, these lines are Jarrah veneer we've put in. And yeah, I, I wouldn't sell this commercially with those bog marks in it. But I'm definitely happy to have it kicking around the place or whatever. The amount of people are coming, oh that's nice, oh you can have that one, I'll make another one. There you go. So I've learnt if I'm going to do... Hey, did you notice that, Jeff? I finished the job. 
If I'm going to do an ingrain chopping board, which I will, I'll do more of them. I won't have a large round over. I'll just put a pencil around on it. And oh, if you could smell that finish, it's lovely. All right, that's one for Susie when she comes down. Pop that there. What are we doing now? Chair. Let's do the chair. Uh, yesterday, 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 we pulled a chair together. Uh, together. We pulled a chair apart and fixed the front legs. Now the back legs need doing and let's go there. The dowels are broken, so those three dowels are broken. Well that was not too bad. And those two dowels are broken there and that was a bit sus. So we've got to drill those out. And where's the chair back? Oh, where, the, where the rest of the chair goes? Oh, there it is. It's not a big workshop. You can't lose things like that. I can. But. And then we're going to have to do the same here. Clean these holes out. Now, I've got some dowel, which is, I believe, 9.5 mil. And I did have, I did have a drill bit. And then I was talking to Mick on the phone and I put it down, I don't know where it is. Hang on, I'm gonna get another one. There we go, it's gotta be one of these two. You're much better off using a brad point bit when you're doing dowels because you won't skew and go off center. Oh. Let me see. Okay, so I've got to cut these flush. And for that, I'm going to use a flush saw. There's a couple, couple around. I've got two. This one's a French one. That's the French one, and it cuts flat. And this one this is an English one. It's called a bendy saw or flush saw, and it means you can get in there and saw like that. My personal preference is the French one because it's hard. Okay. those two in and okay that one's clear that one so that one's got to get drilled out these two have got to come out see they don't give you don't give you much depth on the um on the dowels oh no that's better Okay. Let me have a mouthful of breakfast. I've got to finish because Bob will be back down otherwise. Where are we? Now, 
MC's going for a coffee. Good. I ain't horrible for anyone not to have a coffee. I miss going up to my local coffee shop, I tell you. Uh, look, I don't like doing that, Alfredo. I'm, I'm just looking at your comment about mixing sawdust and, yeah, I, uh, it just, I've never had good results with it. It looks like a patch. At least putty's not pretending not to be putty. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't really like doing that. The other thing is you get the shavings and super glue and you scrunch it together and, and put it in. If I was going to do a big repair, I'd actually cut a wedge of timber and put it in so you can tell it was, here he comes, he heard, uh, and fix it that way. Did you enjoy your coffee? Have you got it with you? Anyone turning, any, any wood turning enthusiast there is screaming who has just come on when this old Grinch finishes work, just ask and I'll tell you after. Oh, good on you, thanks. I was Theo doing a stream. He said he was yesterday. I, I tell you what, I used to suffer from that a bit, Prunella. Um, but not since I've been streaming every day. I know. I get a, a nap as soon as I finish, and then at night time, I'm out like a light. <coughs> uh. Hey, Tango, nice to drop in. Good to see you. Yeah, look, I thought about buying an espresso machine and then I can have coffee at home. But you know what? It's not the coffee that I enjoy. It's sitting in a coffee shop for an hour and a half and someone else makes you a beautiful cup of coffee and brings it to you and you don't have to, for me, to stand there and wait five minutes or whatever it takes to do a nice cup of coffee and then sit down and do it. I prefer not to do it. I used to like green tea, Max, yeah. Where is the job shop, shop dog? Where is he? Did he come in? He came in and left, I think. Oh, no, there he is. There you go. He's, a, he's over there. I'll see if I can spin this camera around. He's, he's waiting for me to finish <laughs> my breakfast so he can lick the bowl. Uh. There you go, Brad. He's in the shop. Oh, no. now he's, oh, no, he's coming around here now. Hang on, I'll just knock this down my neck. Mm. Mm. There you go, old fella. He's happy. There you go. Watch Bob having me breakfast while I do some work. Um, all right, I'm going to clean this off with a chisel. Did I bring a chisel out? Oh, I did. Oh, yuck. That is disgusting. That's sweet. I might even, might even use a rasp on that. You finished? Done, look at me, they all got no chocolate. No. I just want to get all the extra glue and gunk off so I can get a drill in there nicely. That's pattern, Bob. You can't eat the pattern. You right now? What are you going to do? You're going to go. You're going to stay here. You're going to let the house to bludge, because I'm going to shut the door. All right. You stay here. You stay here. You'll be right. 
It's all good. It is all good. Oh, okay. We're, we're back here. Come here. Which one is We're on this one here. These are uh, Luthery rasps. I got them from Stumac a few years ago. They are brilliant. One of them I'm not happy with because it was bent. It's got a woof in it. So I can't get a nice flat um, cut. But the other one's all right. Okay, now, depending on how accurate I am, I want to drill down the center of this dowel and get it out. I'm actually thinking I might use a, if I can find, a thinner set, which I think I've got here. I hope that's him, yep. Um, I'm going to put a smaller pilot one in first because if I'm off centre with this one, I'm going to elongate the hole, which ends up with a very loose joint. And then you have to line up the hole on the chair and it gets a bit messy. So what I'll do is go down and see if I can take the centre core out. Whoop. And that's it. And I've gone into the pocket behind it and then I'll get a, a one eighth chisel and collapse that dowel inwards. And then once I've collapsed it, the um, 10 mil dowel should be able to find its way down there. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I've collapsed the outside. I drilled the guts of it out. Now I've collapsed the outside. Now when I put a 10 mil dowel in, it'll clear that hole quite nicely. And it shouldn't give me any dramas. Famous last words, he says. Which one? This one. <laughs> I do have a dowling machine in the other shed, but I don't really think I can be bothered. Yeah, 
that's a bit blunt. Let me, is that one the same size? Yep, let me try this one. Same the one next to it. Get as close to the center as you think you can. See, that went a lot deeper than the other one. Oh well. Do the same to the other, other side. Only I'll have a chat first. Oh! He's le oh no, he's asleep. My dad used to say, spring has sprung and the grass is riz. I wonder where the birdies is. <laughs> he is, he's getting old though. He sleeps a lot now, but he's still, he'll still run down the back fence. Actually, Sue and I were talking about it last night. He was asleep at the, the foot of our bed. And she looked at him, she said, oh, he's getting on, isn't he? I wonder how much longer we got him for. I said, yeah. He's going a bit grey. She said, yeah, so are you. I said, yeah, but I can't run down the back fence, nor could you. She said, well, that's true. So, <laughs> I don't know, it might be a lower centre of gravity that does it. Who knows? Oh. Steve, I was just ordered a 20k 3k solar. Do you think that? Oh, I think it should. I think it should, Jeff. It should light up your whole suburb. I just got a 6.6, .6 and I tell you what, I can run a lot of stuff off it. So 20 kilowatt. Yep. Mm. Oh, Panda's dropped in. G'day, Panda. How are you? Nice of you to drop in. Good to have you here. Evening to you. Oh, thank you, Brian. Let me let me have a check. Ah, uh, that's punching twos. The other one, I the other mic I had that was playing up, it gave me three bars. This one gives me two, so let's have a look. Oh, good call, Brian. That one's flashing. She's not empty. Hang on. we put two new ones in there. Going off air for a tick, I think. Yes. There you go, we're back. Look at that. Oh, you're a lifesaver, Brian. There you go. As soon as I get out of here, the first thing I want to get is buy a couple of packs of 38 batteries from the big, big box warehouse. 
I found one the other day at 38, and if I do four batteries a day, uh, we'd be pretty right. So that's, it is all good, but I appreciate that. Thank you. I've got to get out of here, Jeff. I can't leave for another few days. <laughs> oh, that's good, Jeff. I appreciate that. Thing. Thanks for the support. All right. Now, let's get back into this one. If anyone's new and they enjoy it, and if you'd like to subscribe, and then you'll know when I'm on. That would be awesome. Love to get me subs up. Uh, and thank you to everyone that's joined up too. Uh, See what I'm doing? You can't see what I'm doing because I didn't press the button. There you go, we're doing this again. I I need me other glasses. They're up in the top shed. Theo yeah, was trying to get get me to get multifocals, but oh, I hate the things. So I've got glasses everywhere, every not every television set, but the main TV that I watch in the house. There's always a set of glasses there. All the cars have two sets of glasses. Workshop, generally I've got a couple of sets of glasses. Because when I get new ones, the prescription isn't really that much different, so I keep using them. Is that that daggy one again, or is it? No. Not going well here. And I wish my compressor worked. You don't realise how much you use compressed air until you... <sighs> don't have it to play with. I'm just, I'm just hoping, against hope. Uh, yeah, it's close. I think that's elongated that hole a little bit, but that's all right, we can fix that. That's better. Move over to the chair back, and we've got to do the same thing here. Clean these out. I'll just move that out of the way, only so I don't. 
run into it and break it further. Okay. Oh, yeah, there was no sound when I was changing the batteries. Oh. Well, that's good. Oh, that's good, Trevor. I didn't say anything nasty about you, mate, at all. <laughs> oh, that's lovely, Max. It's sad, but it's lovely. Steve, you need to have an intermission so we can all get a coffee in Tim Tam. I should go up and get some Tim Tam. Got some in the fridge, too. Hey, Jared, how are you, mate? Pleased to have you in here. Uh, tell you later, Penella. I hope you have a good night, my dear. We'll catch you tomorrow. Hello. Oh, thanks, Bob. Oh, that, that was nice of you. Bob's just chucked up all over me bandsaw. Now he's leaving. Okay, fair enough. Go on, that's your go, mate. You go and get a drink of water. You got water here. Go on. A good boy. We'll clean that up later on. Okay. <laughs> the trick is here not to take off any of the finish, but I've got to get all that glue off. Whoever did them before believed in glue. This is the downside, Alan, you're asking me about why I wouldn't use high glue. A positive of using high glue would be I wouldn't have this horrible sticky residue of glue around everything because the high glue dries nice and hard and brittle and it's much easier to clean up. And if, if these had been done in high glue previously, I would use high glue on them again, definitely. Yuck. Uh, I think this guy used glue as a bit of a gap filler as well. Which is not really professional, but... It happens. And the trick here is not to go through the back of the chair.
leave it all down out. And there we go, we've got a nice clean hole there. All right, oh, I think we're about ready to put him back together. Geez, there's some glue in there, I'll tell you. The way you do it is you work out what length you want, poke your pencil in there, that'll give you a distance, that's how deep the hole is. You need two, two pencils, one to poke and one to mark. So that's going in there, let's go to the shallowest one, which is that one. Okay, that's that one. I might take that one just a tad deeper then. Um, okay, we'll go that length there, we'll go over to the bandsaw and I'll just cut a few of them. What do we need? Oh, if I cut, I'll cut half a dozen. There you go, this should well and truly be more than enough. Okay, there's. I love that foot break on that bandsaw, I tell you. Now get a scrap bit of timber or rubbish or whatever you got. I'll use tight bond too. These nozzles are a good idea, but geez, they block up easily. There we go. Put that there. Yeah, put a little bit of glue down the holes. Where we've got a dowel already, 
Just work some glue on that and let it sort of run down. There. Grab the swab part of the seat and see what we need. Okay, so we've got to put a dowel in this hole and we've got to put two dowels in these holes. So pop him in there, give him a tap, wherever a knockometer is. Here it is. Wait until it bottoms out. You hear it when it bottoms out. And these two down here. Now, this is what I was meant to be doing before. Now put your pencil down there, get the height, and then put it up against this here, and you'll see that that is about five-eighths too long. So you just get a saw, Cut that overage off. Double check again. Put that in there. Hang on. No, it's got to be that one. There. Do that. Then hold it there. And you'll see now I'm about or oh, an eighth, three quarters of an inch um, short, which is good because I want to have a little bit of a pocket, even though these are fluted, it's no good pushing them all the way down and getting a compression joint with the glue because it acts like a spring and you won't get a nice tight fit. So I'm putting the rest of that stuff around there. Same, same on this one. Go down. Whoops. See how deep that is? That's the middle one. Put it there. Yep, I'm going to take about the same amount off that one. Double check it. Yep. And this bottom one. Same again. There you go. Uh, what I will do is I'll, I'll put, oh no, I'll put glue on, oh no, I'll put glue here. Because this has got so much glue on it, I'll wax some more on it as well. And I too shall be using glue as a, a filler, which normally I don't like doing because it's not a good practice to get into, but you're following what other people have done. You just got to adapt. Run a bead of glue around the outside of the hole and that'll feed in over the top of the dowel you've already got and around the rail itself. Same on this side. See, what I should have done too, I don't think I will, is, no. Okay, now this has already been glued on pretty tight, so I'm gonna, again, I don't like doing this, but I'm going to glue that web in because it's already half glued in anyway. What I would prefer to do 
would be leave it and then when the dowels are in, then I'll fit the webs to the chair afterwards. And all things being equal, which generally they're not. There we go. Clamps, where some clamps are. Oh dear. Cork blocks in there. And we'll tighten it up. <laughs> what actually I'll do, I'll cut this cork block up into four. That way. <laughs> Well, I'm not messing around with. There you go. Price of the job just went up four bucks. Oh, come here, you. double-sided tape on there so hopefully so this isn't a real good double-sided tape I use so it wouldn't surprise me if it falls off but it might just hold on long enough Don't put the double-sided tape on the chair, though. Because that's sort of counterproductive. There they are, leaning up against the wall, minding their own business.
Try and get it in the centre too of the um, the rail at the back so you get even pressure all the way along. Once you've got it like that, because you've got the, the cork in there, you're not going to damage the timber, so give it a give it a welly load of pressure. And get a rag. it out and just wash all the excess glue off. If you can get right into the joint it's good. Makes it easier. But as I said yesterday, this, this has already, this has been sprayed. So any glue on there, wouldn't worry about it because when it's dry, the glue isn't going to adhere very well to the finish. So you'll just be able to peel it off like sunburn. There you go. And the other thing that you should do, which I shall do in a second, is take it to a known flat area and give her the old wobble test. We'll take it down here. Put it on the floor. Don't look at the ceiling. Okay, and you just give it a wobble test. And if it doesn't wobble or rock, it's pretty good. Okay, that means it's it's been um, glued up squarely. This has actually got felt pins underneath. But if it wasn't square, you would get a rock when you go on the diagonals. But that's good. So we'll just leave that. And then when it's uh, dry tomorrow, I shall get this web here and nail it in and attach it to that. I'm not going to do it now because if I do nail it, I'm likely to jar the joint and it can get a little bit out of whack. Okay, another job down. Let's do a seven-sided box. I'll show you a great finish. You're gonna love this. Let me just tidy up here a little bit. Where are we, where are we up to? Oh, put that back away there. That blah, 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 there. I'm gonna have a couple of peppermints again. Oh. My phone's meant to be plugged in, it's down 13%. Is it working now? Yep. Oh, look at that, the boss has just turned up. Um, just let me get this glue out of the way. You got another positive saying for us? I certainly have. There you go. Wait a minute, let me clear this out. Because I don't want to get your stuff dirty. Has every little thing. Yeah, good. We have. You heard um, heard from the boys? No. Ow. Well, I don't have a cut a day. I'm not working. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's... You used to go motorbike riding. I did. 
It's true. I used to go motorbike riding, um, dirt bike. And the only time I ever came home was that I'd either smash the bike up or hurt myself. If not, I'll keep, keep on riding until one of those two things happen. Am I totally disturbing you today? No, no, I just finished doing a chair. And I'm tidying up so we can put a box together. Because uh -huh. I've turned over a new leaf. I'm all organised now. Not really. <laughs> you, you snigger almost with conviction. Yeah. Uh, Sniggering with conviction. All right. Come and see here, woman. Be done. What have we got? Hang on, let's have a... Right. Oh! Curry Blue! How are you, me darling? She's going, who's Curry Blue? Pam! Oh, okay. Now, let me see. Where are we up to? I'm getting go. Steve, this compressor blowing is working fine. <laughs> oh, dear. Then um, Prunella's gone to sleep. I might do the same. I tell you what, I'm going to have I'm going to have a bit of a noddy too. Uh, That's my job for the day. I've well, having a sleep. <laughs> You've been busy. Okay. <clears throat> you went through the pantry and found all this stuff out of date. I did. It was shocking. I'm just trying to catch, sorry, I'm just trying to catch up. On the chat. On the chat. See you, Alfredo. Alfredo, yeah, where did, where did Penny slip in? She was there a second ago. Oh, there we go. I could phone you and watch you pick up. You could do that. I'll do it. Um... Sue run, he will cut your hands up too. Okay, we're down to where everyone's saying hi. Uh, oh, I thought there was some, someone else coming in. Yeah. They're all busy. Oh, good luck with your chairs, Fred. I hope you can do them. Lucas says hi. Hi, Lucas. Panda says hi. I think Dennis said hi, but if he didn't, he would have. Reginald said hi. Kerry said, oh, Kerry likes your, likes your um, quilts. Sure. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Everyone's there. Look, they're all saying, see, I don't get, I, you know, mate, you know, they, they are, Pam. Um, hopefully they're all going to be coming home soon. We, we're just not sure what the border restrictions are. But as you know, this place, they'll be happy to spend 14 days here with all the sheds we've got and all the tools yes, and all the absolutely. different outlets. Right. Randy says, Sue, your work is beautiful. Two thumbs up. They've never said that about my work. All they do is criticise me and tell me how stupid I am. And, and must because you're short. Thanks. They feel sorry for you. Thanks. Just <laughs> because my kids can do that. Sue, can you do an embroidery show for us? There you go, Mike. Uh, yeah, it will be. If not, I'll get them to stay at your place for 14 days. Is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. What have we got? This is the one for today. Got to find my flipping camera first. There you go. Find yourself. Hey, that is so true. Given, given the situation we're in, a lot of people are. They're going, and I'm talking in particular one of my sons. If you're watching, you know which one. Because you're not got the corporate watchdog biting at your heels, and pressure and times and budgets, you sit back and you chill and you find out what you really want. Absolutely. That's it. What else you got there? You got some other yummies there. I've got a hot quilt. A cot quilt. Want to take the price tag off it? Yeah, good idea. Because yeah. people say it's too cheap. Mm. I reckon it is. 
She has $75 she wants for that, all handmade. Look at that. 75 bucks. She's too cheap. I reckon that's lovely. It's all <laughs> embroidered and appliqued. So, for the Pam, guys out there that don't know what I'm talking about, that's what it looks like. Yeah, we well, could take the koala bear, whack it over on the close shot, on the close up. There you go. Yeah, you can get it there. You're going at the wrong camera, hun. No, this camera here. Oh, okay. No, let go. Let go. There you go. There you go. See, it fills the screen. That's low. that's applique. So it's all different bits sewn on top of each other. She's clever. Yeah, Trevor, I reckon the, the, the um, more height challenge they are, the more it's condensed and packed up. Isn't that right? We're going to do a part of the picture frame in a minute. We're just going to put these boxes together, and then we're going to start making the frame. Mm -hmm. I'm just cool. moving that glue so you don't yeah. move. That's another one. Another one tomorrow, Mrs. H? Another one tomorrow. It sounds good to me. Oh. Well, I don't know about that one. She might be telling the James, I just get bored easily. <laughs> <laughs> All right, took okay, I'll be. Oh, okay, and now three quarters now. Yeah. Oh, dear. So we've got to work on Susie to start streaming, eh? Mmm. <laughs> oh, it wouldn't be the first time I've slept with the MC. Oh, dear. Yeah, that's what I reckon. Too cheap. Kerry Blues is too cheap. Mm. So does Brian. That's it. Uh. Hey, Suze. She's gone. I'll, I'll, I'll tell her about it because she's making these disposable nappies. Um, or rewashable, reusable or something. And they... Sort of clip on like the disposable nappies, but you got real nappies inside. She was making those. I'll, I'll, I'll mention that to her. Oh. Ah. Just put that one back in. What are we going to do? Oh, we're going to glue this together. All right. This is, this is, this is secret, secret business. This how to get a really nice finish. That looks a hundred years old without having to learn French polishing. Okay, so here we go. You didn't miss much. Oh, you missed Susie saying for the day, find yourself, Mark. There you go. It's philosophical. That's her saying for the day. Um, yeah, that's what I reckon, MC. That's what I'd be putting on them. <laughs> oh, all right, Jeff. We'll remember that. Goodness gracious. <laughs> G'day, Julian from England again. Lovely to have you in. Oh, okay. Now, this here you can't see because I'm not on I was not showing you. Alright, that's just a gloss. That's what we've been putting that um Dear Wax Blonde on. But I'll show you how to get a really nice, see the difference? That's more like a, a sheen. See that mirror there? As opposed to that just looks, I don't know, tacky. So first of all, get some water. A um, bit of, I prefer 600 if I've got any 600 here, I don't. I bet you that's all 400. No, that's 800. That'll do. Okay. 800 wet and dry. Or 600, 400. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't go any coarser than 400. Put it that way. Just get that all working. So we'll put some water in there. Let's do it with this one. And... You knock back the gloss. Now, 
And people say, what would you do that for? <laughs> it's another thing I like about Burl. Doesn't matter which way you sand, you're always going to be with the grain. No, 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 no. Grab another bit of rag. Because <laughs> I step for the pits because it's a burl, you can see there's no gloss on that. I'm just going to do the rest of them while I'm in the mood. I'm going to say it again. If anyone's new and they'd like to subscribe, I'd really appreciate it if you whack the subscribe button. That would be wonderful. Then I know I'm, I'm reaching out to new people. Yeah, that's, that's a term that's become very popular now, I've found. I'm reaching out to you, and to me it's in the context, wrong context. What I just said then... If you hit the subscribe button, I know I'm reaching out to new people. To me, is the right context because there are people that um, the stream is actually getting to, so I'm reaching new people. But I get so annoyed. I must get 40, at least 40 emails a day for someone to tell me there's something wrong with my website how I can get more customers, and I would say at least 8 out of 10 start out with, I'm reaching out to you. Why, are you drowning or something? Come on, give me a break. I, you know, it's, to me, you're reaching out It's because you need help. I'm reaching out for help, not you're reaching out to stitch me up for some blooming C, what is it? SEO. Rubbish I don't want. I don't want to have a bigger website. I'm very happy with what I'm doing at the moment. I'm not selling anything on the website. I will. I'll be selling my chopping boards and Sue and I were talking about putting the quilts up and boxes and what have you. Uh, but then I will use ordinary marketing techniques such as mentioning to you good people in the stream, whacking it on Facebook. I don't need to buy words and stuff. I don't, I don't make that much stuff that I need to have 10,000 people visiting me each day. Although I must admit, I think my website gets a couple of thousand hits a day. Not much on it though. Okay, so there you go. Not glossy at all. Here we go. Get another bit of rag. Oh. Oh, actually, I only need two bits of rag. Mm. Oh. Uh, this one, I think I actually will glue up with high glue. So I'll put my high glue pot back on. There's a couple of things you can use. I'll show you one if I can find it, which is absolutely excellent. And I'll show you another one, which is absolutely excellent as well, and you most likely already have. There we go. Whoops. Crunch, bang, whoop. Oh. This is a great one. which is a Lebron product that I use. I use it a lot on French polishing. It is extraordinary. But watch this one. Okay, so you get burnishing on there. 
rotary motion, nice tight circular motion and up and down. If you can train your finger to do it, figure of eights. This is, is I must be feeling soft and dead because I don't, normally I don't share this. But I think certain situations require relaxing the rules. And this is how you get a French polished finish without actually French polishing. All right, we'll just let that dust up. Once that one's doing that, we'll do another one. Boom, ba -dum, boom, boom. <clears throat> Oh no, this this is secret people's business. I, I can't say men's business because nearly all my students I've had in the past, I've had some guys, but nearly all of them been women. And they've been good students. Haven't they, Kerry Blue? And I miss you. <laughs> We had fun. We did. We had fun. This honestly, it's guaranteed to look like Victorian furniture when you're finished. It uh, just creates its own patina or patina, depending on what you want to call it. And I think, what's the time? Yeah, when we've done this, I'll glue this up. Then we'll cut the picture frame. We'll glue that up. And that will be it for the day, I think. So we've still got a good half an hour to go. And then tomorrow we'll start another chair with a, another problem. And um, oh, I didn't... Get to machine that timber up, but I'll machine the timber up so we can make the plinths or stands for the um, boxes behind me. And then we're going to have to start lining them because they're going to be lined with Spanish cedar and leather on the base. And then we're going to be fitting hinges. That's going to be boring. I wonder what my success rate's going to be. Oh, it's one of those things. It is fun doing this live because you've got no idea what's going to happen. Been lucky so far. I haven't had any major disasters. All right. Yeah, we'll start. I want bigger cloth than that. Oh. This is great for wood turning too. You want to get a really nice deep luster on um, a bowl or anything you've done with wood turning. This is the stuff. Let's see if we can get. Can you see that? See how glassy that is? It's just like French polish. It's just like a sheet of glass. This is going to be the inside of the box. So I want it to look a bit special. Here we 
we go. So that's it, to get it finished like that. And wouldn't you know it, someone opened their gob, but that's it. Get some Brasso on it. And guess where Alan learned to use Brasso? There you go. So no, it's good stuff in the mate. Um, Brasso is absolutely brilliant for buffing up things. Even if you've got some old French polish, on a, um, a cabinet or something, and you want to brighten it up, just give it a lick with a bit of Brasso, and it will come up like new, and you get that really deep, rich gloss over it. And it doesn't look like a toffee apple. <laughs> Put your teeth back in. It doesn't look like a toffee apple finish. It just looks like a sheet of glass. So there you go. You most likely got that on hand. Ah, oh, now let me catch up with whatever. Wasn't there seven pieces? Oh, I'm missing something. What do we got? We got six. Seventh is over here. There we go. We did. We missed one. Thank you for that. I would have made a hexagonal box otherwise. <laughs> All right. Where's Oh dear. Where did I put? I don't know. Oh, I can't find the 800 I use. 1000. And then we'll glue this up. Did I, I was going to use high glue on this, wasn't I? That's right. There we go. That in there, give her a what? Just so you know, I'm not telling you stories. That's it. And we'll whack a bit of, whack a bit of the old brass out on it. Any military or ex, definitely ex-military would know exactly what it is. I don't think they do it anymore, do they? Are they that fastidious with shiny brass? I don't know. You used to sit up for hours shining your belts and the buckles on your gaiters and the little clasps on the strap of your rifle. Goodness gracious. How about you, Tango? Did you have to have things all nice and shiny? Or Mark? Uh, there we go. Now the reason I put tape on the side was because I didn't want the uh, edges to get contaminated with anything so the glue will take. So I'm just going to take those off. La -da -da And again, clamping them up, multi-sided polygon boxes, can be a challenge. I do have a clamping system I could use, but I'm going to use a real cheap alternative because the clamping system I've got is a Nobex clamping system. I'm going to use that on the picture frame. I do have another one up in the other shed, but I'm not going up to the other shed to get it. Come here, you. There we go. 
All right. Put all those out. Oh, these. There's me bit of 800. Um, put the lid on this. That was the other stuff, Alan. Lebron burnishing cream, which is really nice. have a chat. Where are we up to? Uh... <laughs> oh, that's why I've got a beard, James. I had to shave every day. And I decided I never wanted to shave again. And so I don't. <laughs> oh, there you go. Because generally they pay a lot of money for it, Max. That's why. <laughs> but I don't mind sharing. We got it. We got to keep it alive. That's what this is all about. Great community sharing, so there's no secrets. Matter of fact, I think that particular um, short cuddle trick I learnt. Crikey. Would be over 20 years ago, I think. And then I think it cost me $700. Um, so, yeah. And that, that wasn't what I went. I went to learn French polishing and that just came out. It was just something was dropped out through the whole few days of learning how to French polish. And that little gem came up. And it's one that I've just held close to my heart. Oh, Louise, you just keep putting shellac on shellac on shellac on shellac on shellac. If I was um, really anal about it, I'd fill all these holes up, but frankly, the, the time it takes to fill them up, all the little pits in the burl, um, yeah, I'm not going to do it. But yeah, there's, <sighs> over time, you, you'd put hundreds of coats of shellac on, very, very thin coats. You off, Jeff. I missed it. See ya. Yeah, it's good for all sorts of things, that. They still use it, Dennis, do they, in the army? Oh, I'm surprised. They had bows and arrows when I was in. <laughs> oh, well, didn't you have to have shiny stuff in the Air Force too? You have to make your planes all shiny. <laughs> so you used to fly what I used to jump out of. There you go. I, yeah, I'd much prefer to do brass on a uniform than a ship, thanks, Mark. Yeah, Gleam was the other one, wasn't it? That was that cotton wool impregnated stuff. I remember, I think Amway bought a product out that was, it was some sort of black. They banned it when I was in because you had to spit polish everything, but this Amway product, you used to paint it on, it was like an, an enamel. Um, yeah, if, if anyone, especially recruits, if they got caught using that on their boots, they had to strip it straight back and start again with spit polish. Yuck! Oh, there you go, Max. Yeah, I'm pleased I'm not there anymore. Uh, hey, Wesley! Great to have you back, mate. Yeah, love you too, brother. You look after yourself. Oh, yeah, dry shave. And did they have those, did they have those Gillette double-sided blue Gillette blades? They were blunt when you got them. Oh, horrible. <laughs> ha, 
Oh, yeah. You're welcome, Alan. Oh, dear. Yeah, mine would have been about, I don't know. Yeah, mine would have been about that ago, I suppose. Oh, dear. All right. So let's put this puppy together. Where's... Oh. Let's glue it up. Oh. I'm going to use hide glue on this one. Several reasons. One, because I like it. Um, but also, gee, I've nearly gone through a pot of glue. And I tell you, all that glue I bought the other day, I've gone through nearly half of one of the big ones. I must be doing some woodwork, I think. It's good. Isn't that a great idea for the bottle? Can you remember that, Pammy, when we did that? That was, a, that was nearly a decade and a half ago. Crikey. Who was around there was, I've forgotten most of them. No, oh, Glenn. It was Glenn Owen, Ray, Dave, other Dave, Graham, and all the boys, Knuckles, all the, all the boys down the shed. That's when I had a woodworking school on the Gold Coast. That was good fun. It was good fun. All right. Now, what we're going to do is stack them all up. I'm going to double glue. And here we go. Get the glue nice and liquidified. Let's go there so you can see. See the steam coming off the glue. And then slide them the other way. And then you face them inside like that. And you get a rubber band, and you put it around the outside, and then you just join them together. This little piggy wants to get into. Is that not the easiest way you have ever seen of gluing the box together? You can just line them all up. And the other good thing with the hide glue, no, that's going to be too small. Uh, when it dries, those finishes I've got on there, it's just going to peel off them really nicely. So now, big stretch. There's every chance it can collapse. But we might be lucky. No, it didn't collapse. Look at that. Turn it up the other way. Same thing, big stretch. Let's make sure they're all nicely aligned. There you go, seven sided box, glued up in a matter of seconds. So we'll put this over here and we'll go back to that tomorrow. Do more on that. Okay, what are we up to? Picture frame. Here we go, picture frame. Dude, we're rattling through some work. Save that for Ron. Put that over there, put that over there. Oh, I've got to have a drink of water because I'm feeling thirsty. I don't want that. It's got cocky poo in it.
I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying myself. I hope you'll find it interesting, just maybe what a woodworker gets up to in a day, as opposed to just watching me do one thing. Ah, oh, where are we? Yeah, they're the ones. Yeah. Blunt blue Gillette. Oh, they, I reckon they must have bought a couple of container loads in the Second World War and they just had to use. Oh, they were horrible. Oh, how many years ago was it for me? It must have been. When did I get out? I might have been. I don't know. I know I was happy when I got out. <laughs> um, yeah, it must have been. Crikey! 40 years ago for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh I got a cold shiver. Oh, no. <laughs> it's amazing how it scars you, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, mate, he is. He's, he's not here at the moment, I don't think. No, he's gone up. Yeah, no, he's still eating the glue. Oh, which reminds me. When I drop this, I thought he's going to be in this. I'll just move my veneer hammer back over there. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's because we, we can boss it around to do what we want it to do and it doesn't argue, I, <laughs> I reckon, Dennis. Uh, yeah, James, I'll tell you, the more you do, the more you're looking for shortcuts. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, we're all young at heart, Brian, until we get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> That's the reality check. Not only that, our clairvoyance increases, so I, I knew what you meant. All right, James, we'll catch you tomorrow, mate. <laughs> uh. Mate, my hat off to you. 75, I wouldn't worry about forgetting where your pencil is. I'd forget where my trousers were. Okay, I've, I've had them behind my ears. I, I, I've counted up to three pencils. One in that ear, one in that ear, and when I go and put another one in there, I realise I found the other ones. My chat didn't think it. Oh, well, there you go. No, we had some ore. I'm going to check. Whilst you tell me, Brian, I'm going to check my battery on this one because we could be down to one on that, which is okay. No, no, I've still got two there. See, little sneaky things, I've got this, um, what do you call it, makeup mirror that, you know, really shows your pimples and what have you up. But I hold it over the top of the camera and then I can see what my battery's doing because it's, I can't ooh, stand up and look, it doesn't work. Okay, well, let's cut this little sucker up, shall we, and we'll whack her. We'll put a frame together. Oh, and again, I think I'll use oop, hide glue on that. Now, I could just do this with a normal saw, but I couldn't be bothered. Um, we'll do that on a later one. This this is a brilliant bit of kit too. Oh, Dusty's all get up. Um, and it really gives me a nice cut. So I thought I'd use that. I've got one of the old Stanleys over there too in a 1920s jobby, but this is much, much nicer to use. It's a Nobex. Michael, if you're watching, or Renee. They're from Promac. They bring these into Australia, and they also bring the Tormix in. It hasn't had much use for a while. Okay, so we've got to work out what angle, first of all, we need this angle here, so the saw's got to be on this side. 
And this, this is how good this is. Actually, the old Stanleys have got the same thing, which I'll, <coughs> I'll show you over. Here's, here's the old Stanley one down. Did you idiot. Tell you what, Brian, you forget your pencil. I forget to change cameras. Here we go. All right. Hope you don't get vertigo. There's the old Stanley one down there. And it's got how many sides you want to cut. If you want a four, five, five sided, six sided, eight sided, 12 sided, 24 sided. And that's it there. The old Stanley's even got a brass. Look at that. Old brass plaque down there. <coughs> oh, about this one, the new Nobex, it's got basically the same, <coughs> same thing, but it's got a much, much finer blade, which is nice. Okay. So, that can go there. We'll go these two here. And we will cut an angle there. <laughs> a bit further up that way. There you go. All right. Now, what do we say? It's 500. We've got to measure um, the length of the internal and then the external. It doesn't really matter because it's just going to come up with whatever it comes up with. Okay, we have that there. Have that there. That'll do. And we swing it around the other way. And pop this in here. And drop it down. The, the first one doesn't matter so much, but the rest do because they have to be exactly the same as the first, if that makes sense. Actually, I do have, they do have, but I, I left them up at the um, other shed. They've got clamps in there to hold it in. And I'm just thinking that would be a very good idea so it doesn't move. So I will... I will improvise. There you go. Whoa! <coughs> Gravity is such a wonderful thing. Now, what I was saying yesterday was you can shorten the length of the material you need. If you haven't got a moulding in it, where that 45 is, you could use that as the inside of the frame. But soon we've got a moulding, you can't do that because it's, that's not going to line up. But if it was just a square piece, you could do that. And what do we say? You, you saved about 200 mil. So what I have to do now is take this corner off and recut. So I've got to go around this side again. Take this corner off here and then we can recut. I've got, 
going to clean up the vomit that Bob just put over my bed? <laughs> Sorry, just had a look at it again. <coughs> 250 by 400. There you go. All right. Well, we'll, we'll, was it? Whatever, we'll do it. Hey, but on one morning I couldn't read the pills. Oh, don't you hate that when that happens? One of the lenses pop out your glasses, you put them on, and <laughs> the whole world. The whole world looks really strange and you, can't, you can't figure out why. I it happened to me once. I I um I put them on and one of the one of the lenses fell out. And I thought oh, one of the lenses fell out. I wonder which one. And I went like that and parked myself straight in the eye. Oh dear, oh dear. Ah. Oh. It's an advantage of growing older, isn't it? You can do more dumb things. Okay, so we'll marry this one up with this. Check it. Spin that around. Drop it down. Move it up. Make sure it's even. I'm doing it by feel. You, you, you feel is much better than measuring, I reckon. Clamp that little sucker in place. There you go. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is actually mark these as I go around. So this was the first one. So I'll put one there, one there, two here, and the other one I'll put two. So when we marry them together, we'll get an even spread on the, um, where are we? We'll get an even spread on the timber colour with the sapwood there and also the moulding shouldn't be too far out. It might be out a little bit because when you're doing the long moulding like that you can mess it up a little bit but once it's glued together it's easy enough to uh, sort out the mouldings and meld them together to make... Whoops to make one. Oh, I was going to move it too late before he started cutting. Carry blue because I'm pretty sure I didn't have this bit of kit when you were with me. Makes life easier. And this gives such a nice clean cut that I don't have to clean it up with a plane, which is nice. So this one's two on this end, and this is three on this end.
like that's three. And the other end's going to be four. Always use the same one as your template as well, don't? Sort of use a different one each time because you can get a compounding error, which is annoying. Very much so. Lucky last. I think uh, what I'll do with this one too, we might stain it. Not tomorrow, uh, the next day with Van Dyke crystals. Which is a very, very old staining technique that goes back to the 1600s. In fact, it goes back further. I think they'll, they'll most likely find it was used in the Pharaoh's times. And uh, it's crushed walnut husks. So that's four. That means that last one has to be, oh, that's four back to one. So that's three. Okay. All right. Mm. Oh, look, that's handy. I've got, I've got a chair I can put that on. Don't have to stoop down so far. Okay, these bits here are rubbish. And we'll have a look, see here. Two, three. One, two. One, 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 we'll clamp that up in a tick, it's starting to look fairly reasonable, little, slight little bit of an adjustment in there, but that's all good. Take any dags off there that need to be cleaned up on the edge. Make sure your faces are nice and clean. <laughs> Very pertinent in this day and age, isn't it? Um, here we go. This is a clamping system I was talking about. You can do multi, multi faceted things. I only need four today though, so I'll take these two off. This is another Nobex product, which is really, really good. Well done. All right. <clears throat> As you can tell, I go through a lot of baking paper. I buy it commercially from, I get it from a place on the Gold Coast called Campbell, which is a grocery wholesaler. Um, and you can buy it in much bigger rolls than you can from the the supermarket, but it's good. Glue doesn't stick to it. It's tougher than the old greaseproof paper. And the only downside to it, a uh, tape doesn't stick to it as well. If you're using masking tape for any reason. One, two, 
one, one, two, two. Okay. Same thing, get it all sort of lined up before you put your glue on. So you can get there pretty quick. Let me have a chat before I start doing the glue. <coughs> Um, yeah, now this one I think it was square. So I thought we'll leave this one square. What I do need those measurements for, these box lids I think are 250 by 300 or something like that. So all good, but hey, you had a crack mark. That's all I could ask, mate. Thank you, I appreciate it. Let me go back. How far am I? Dennis is just gone. Oh, <laughs> oh that's lovely, Brian. <laughs> uh, yeah, something like that. Ah. <laughs> oh, not wasabi. No, that was true. The fingers don't lie. <clears throat> I remember I, I um, working somewhere once and they used to, when you were talking about his feet were on fire, they used to play gotcha and the, the idea was to get them to look down and they'd see something, oh, hey, gotcha, gotcha. And this bloke was using a grinder and he was standing on steel wool, which self-combusted, and his overalls were on fire and everyone was going, no, oh, no, you're on fire. He said, no, no, no. He said, I'm not looking down. And he eventually looked down. We all got a good laugh at it. They were in the good days when OH&S was called Practical Jokes. Oh, how many times have you been asleep by the fire and you've stood up and your feet are nearly burned? Oh, there you go, Mark. Yep. Was it? Let's see how close we are. I think I've gone a bit bigger than that, but ah, doesn't matter. It's all good. We can always make it shorter. If, it's easy to make the frame smaller if we want to. Yeah, have a look at the ends there, uh, Alan. Absolutely beautiful. And they are spot on. You don't have to worry about cleaning the ends up with a plane, squaring them, adjusting angles or anything. They are absolutely schmick. G'day, Roscoe. Yeah, no, the, the old Stanley one, you have to shoot the ends because um, it's a rough cut. That blade I've got in there is a Japanese blade, but it cuts on the push. So in that regard, it's not a true, true Japanese blade, but it is sort of like a Japanese blade. I'm thinking we're pretty close here, so let's give it a shot. The glue's getting a little bit too thick, but it should be all right. We'll, we'll survive this glue up. I think there might be a slight, about a tenth of a mil out there, but We'll adjust it when we put it together. So here we go. What's that? One and three. No, that's four. Okay. How did I get that confused so quickly? That's one. That means it's got to be four. Is that four? Okay. Now... Now we're going. 
and that's one with that. So that means the last one left has to go there, doesn't it? And there we have it. And you put these little clips on there and you pull this string down. You pull this string down here. Put that up there. Put that on there. Get it sort of in the middle of your frame. And give it a good pull that puts tension on it. And just go around and <coughs> square everything up nicely. on it without stuffing it. There we go. And there you go. It is done. We'll leave that to dry for tomorrow. So we'll look at the back side of them. It's not too bad. And then if we've got to, we can feather in anywhere where the moulds quite aren't joining. And I think what I'll do on the back is I'll put some um, bow ties in there, or butterflies, which we can do tomorrow once it's dry. So there you go, knocked over some stuff today. It's all good. <clears throat> uh, where are we up to? <laughs> yeah, I look, um, actually, I might ring them up. I'll, I'll, I'll see if they want to talk to me one day and we can talk about what they've got on. Brilliant things. It's a Nobex. There's two. There's a small one and there's a bigger one. I suggest you get the bigger one if you're going to get one, though. Yeah, Japanese saws are good. I like them. Well, Julian, you know where I'll be every morning at 9.30 my time? We're going to be streaming live. So if you're in a lockdown and you can't get out and you like blooming whatever woodwork, we're here. <clears throat> oh, yeah, couldn't you just put something on your saw to keep it clean? A bit of grease or spray it with something? Oh, we'll get on to a bed soon, uh, Roscoe. I've, I've promised my wife a four-poster bed. I've got the posts made. I've got to turn them. So we'll be doing that all, all live stream too. <clears throat> no, no. I'm not framing everyone. Although she did say to me last night, she said, we could frame them all and sell them. I said, yeah, good on you. No. <laughs> Um, no, actually, I'm the one, Mike, that makes the aprons, and I'm going to make one next week. I, I might have been you I was mentioning to. And, uh, yeah, we'll film the embroidery done with Woodworking Masterclass. I've got another one. Oh, it's up in the other shed with fine boxes. So we'll make one live. We'll make two live. There you go. Oh, well, all right, Mike. Well, I'll tell her that. No, I won't, because I'm not getting her making money, and I'm not making any. <laughs> Never buy tools. Oh, no, but I get the whole thing, Jeff. Yeah, I'm not even going to mention that name. Did you get it sorted? I'll ring them up and give them another reef for you. Oh, look, I've sold two already. Yeah, my wife's looking forward to seeing it too, Roscoe. It's been a while in the making, but it's all good. All right, well, that's it. I'm up to date with everyone. We have done some work today, people. 
We've fixed a chair. We've veneered the heart for the boxes. We've joined the seven side of the box together. We put a picture frame together. Oh, and we've finished a chopping board that was a failure. So there you go. We've done some good stuff, more stuff to do tomorrow too. But in the meantime, thank you everybody for being well behaved, being attentive, having fun, joining in and becoming a part of, it really is growing into a great community. I will say it again though, if you do like what you see, I'd appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button, get the numbers up so I know that people are watching and um, I can do more things. I'll be here again same time tomorrow. Uh, we've got another chair to do there. I've got some plimps to make up for these boxes and also some solid sticking to put on that and we might cut some box tops off. Uh, that chair's finished. That, so, oh, we might even put, um, I don't know, might make a, a top and a base up for that seven-sided box and continue with this picture frame. So there you go. This is Steve pulling the shed door down. So remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. Stay, keep it safe. Stay safe. Look after yourself. Be kind to each other and considerate of others. And I look forward to having your workshop in now your workshop in my presence. I'm not bed really. I'm just tired. I'm, what is it? I'm bed. I want to go tired. I'm not really tired. Um, let me get back to where I was. I look forward to your company in the workshop tomorrow morning or afternoon or evening, wherever you may be. In the meantime, thank you. Good night. Catch you later. Bye for now. grandma nap. I've worked out grandmas get longer naps than grandpas. So there you go. <laughs> Thanks everyone. See ya. Oh, I don't even know how to turn it off now. No, that's it. I'm, oh, I've got to go and clean Bob's mess up now. You want to, no, I won't even show it to you to put you off your lunch. Where's my tab? <laughs>